When you think of a bad game engine, you might think of Unity because of how they attempted to pass a new ridiculous pricing structure not too long ago. But you know, that pricing structure is not even the worst one of the top engines, and what's even worse is that all these percentages that you see floating around, like Unity takes 2.5% and Unreal takes 5%, these percentages are actually really inaccurate. And to understand exactly how all of this is happening under the noses of developers, let me explain a very simple concept that you really need to know before you can understand how these game engines are lying to you. So when you sell a game, it makes revenue, right? Uh, but then there's the difference between gross revenue and net revenue. And what do these terms mean in the context of selling your game? Well, gross revenue is straight up just what your game makes without any other deductions. So if your game costs $10 and you sell 100 copies, then your gross revenue is $1,000. Now, net revenue is a bit more complicated, especially because it means different things depending on who you are in the game development space. But for the sake of this video, I will refer to net revenue as a revenue that developers receive once all of the fees related to stores, IP licensing, and so on are deducted. So let's take that example that we had before where we sold 100 copies for $10. What is the net revenue of this game? Well, assuming we sell the game on one of the modern storefronts, these usually take 30% off the top, plus some extra due to refunds, withholding taxes, chargebacks, and you know, stuff like that. So it's not uncommon for the total percentage of this to end up at around 40%. So at this point, the net revenue has already gone down to $600. And by the way, this figure could easily be significantly more. I know some developers that this 40% figure is actually closer to maybe 55% because of more refunds, or they sell games in a different country with different tax laws. But for the sake of this video, I'll keep it at 40%. So beyond that, let's just assume you also have a publisher, which at this scale, you know, is pretty common. And they take maybe on average 40% after what the storefronts take. And so 60% of 600 is $360. So that's what you end up as a developer after the publisher takes the cut. And there's a lot more I could deduct from this, especially if you have something like manufacturing costs for physical copies, but for now, we're gonna leave it at this. So in our example, the gross revenue was $1,000 and the net revenue was $360, meaning that it's quite common for the money that developers actually receive to only be about 36% of what the game actually sold for. And this sounds bad enough, right? But it gets way worse, and still, this has nothing to do with the game engine pricing, right? So how does this concept affect that? So let me explain the pricing structure of Unity and Unreal, the two most used engines, and how the gross versus net revenue discrepancy I just explained plays into it. Unity right now has a bit of a weird system where you need to pay a certain amount per copy of your game bought or 2.5% of your game's revenue, whichever is lower. But for the sake of this comparison, I'll just take the 2.5% for all future examples since it's the upper band of what they can charge and the per copy payment depends so much on the kind of game that you're making that it really overcomplicates things. So how does Unreal's pricing differ? Well, it's a bit simpler and they basically take 5% of your revenue. And just to clarify, Unity's fee is subject to your game making over $1 million a year and Unreal's is subject to your game making over $1 million in the game's total lifetime. And I know it may sound like it's a lot of money and how it's never going to apply to you, but I think when making a decision on whether you think an engine is the right fit for you, you should consider whether it works for you even if it's not applicable right now because things can change and you don't want to kick yourself later. And I know even then it doesn't really sound like too big of a deal, it's just 5% over $1 million. If you have a game making over a $1 million, then it's probably not too big of a deal as what you're likely thinking. But trust me, after I explain the full implications of this pricing, you might think differently. And even if it doesn't affect you, it definitely affects developers who you might like with larger budgets that might still be considered indie depending on who you ask. So now that you've caught up, how does the pricing of these two engines have anything to do with the gross versus net revenue thing that I explained later? Well, I said that Unity and Unreal took a cut of your revenue, right? But what I didn't say is what kind of revenue they take from. If you go to the most desolate place on earth, the Unreal Engine end user license agreement, you'll see that the revenue they take from is actually the gross revenue. And if we go to the Unity webpage that describes their pricing structure, they do the same. They take the percentage of the gross revenue. So what does this actually mean? Well, let's take a look at the original example we had. We made a game that made $1,000 in gross revenue, and the net was $360. If Unity takes 2.5% of this, it ends up being $25, which is actually 7% of your net revenue. Unity doesn't take 2.5% of the money you make, it takes 2.5% of the money your game makes. It's a huge, huge difference. Now, let's check out how this works with Unreal. They take 5% of gross revenue, right? And that ends up being $50, 
which is 14%. That's really substantial. It could be the difference between your game being profitable or it losing money. And you may be thinking, well, this can't be that bad, right? 14% is a lot, but it won't destroy your life or anything. Well, let me give you some examples. Let's say you run a pretty nice indie studio and make a game that makes $3 million. Sounds amazing, right? Well, of those $3 million, you only receive 36% of it, which means you profit $1,080,000. But then, Unreal comes along and asks you for 5% of your gross revenue above $1 million, which is $100,000. Okay, doesn't sound too bad, right? You still profit $980,000, but I mean, that game that you made is not just something you can whip up, it costs something to make, right? It wouldn't be unheard of for a game that makes $3 million to cost $1 million to make. So that means that you actually lost money on making this because your margins weren't large enough. If you want to make games not to siphon money but for the sake of making something that people really enjoy playing, you may not want to monetize yourself as much as possible so a 14% skim off the top of your profit margin could really be the difference between having enough to make a prototype for your next game and then seeking funding or not being able to make another game again. So the most obvious fix that you might think is, why can't game engines just take a piece of the net revenue instead of the gross revenue? Well, let me give you an example of how you can completely take advantage of this as a developer if it was like this. Remember how the publisher cuts are also included in deducting from the net, but the publisher doesn't have to pay any of that? Well, if you had two companies, your studio that makes games, and your publisher that you also made, your publisher doesn't do anything, but takes 100% of revenue and leaves your development studio with 0% of the revenue, that means that your net revenue is $0, and so you don't have to pay any fee, right? But you still made the money because your publishing company has kept it. See how that's a problem? Well, what if you were to force the people who get a percentage of the gross to pay their part? Well, Unity actually tried this with Xbox Game Pass, where they would force Microsoft to pay for the installs, but it just didn't work out. You can imagine being Steam, Nintendo, Xbox, or PlayStation, you have so much power over Unity and Unreal, and have no obligation to pay a higher fee. You can just say no, and the engines have nothing to say about it. It's similar with publishers, where they have no real incentive to take on this cost because they just never have, and so it's harder to convince them to do so without you having to give them something in return. And it's not impossible, of course, but when you're negotiating, you want to have as few things stacked against you. So in my opinion, I feel like this percentage approach doesn't really work well at all. And on top of that, the numbers that these engines take a percentage from are based on self-reported figures, so it just feels like really messy in multiple ways. I feel like just paying for a subscription or something outright would be the best way to approach it, but Unity already does that on top of the percentage fee that they charge, and they, I guess they don't feel that it's enough, so I guess that doesn't work either. In the end, as a game developer, the best thing you can do for something like this is use an open source engine like Godot since you'll never run into issues like this, and while unfortunately not everybody can use it yet because it may not be where they need it to be, hopefully over the next few years it can, and that should also lead Unity and Unreal to feel pressure and make changes to their pricing. So at least there's a feature there, and I wish I could say the same for storefronts, because taking 30% off of games is really so much, uh, but I think we're going to have to really wait a long time for that to be the norm, if it's ever going to happen. Also, the gameplay in the background is from my game, Soulstalker, which is actually out right now, so go get it if it's been interesting to you, the link's in the description. And if you already played it, I'd really appreciate it if you left a review, it helps so much in boosting the game in Steam's algorithm.